guys, it's Thursday, Friday here at Everyday Struggle in the Desco with my guys DJ Academics and Wayno. Good morning. What's good with y'all, man? What's good with y'all? How y'all doing? I'm doing great. Rutgers in the building. I man, see you. I come in the building today. I barely survived getting here, but I come in the <laughs> building. They're having a whole debate before the show, and I'm like, damn. We're going to get to it later. No, no, no. We're going to get to it now. Look, we, we, have a, now? we got a lot of okay. important topics. We got to talk about this Pusha Drake never ending beef. But first, we got to clear up some Tim's issues I had <laughs> yesterday. All right, look, yesterday, it was cold. It's fucking cold in New York right, right now. I put on a pair of Tim's. People were destroying me in my comments yesterday, and I don't care. I'm used to being trolled. They were like, are those the Birdman I lugs? Love, you guys I'll, remember the lugs? Oh, the Birdman lugs. lugs. Oh, but man. here's one of my girls hitting me in my group chat. She was getting tight. Right. She was like, do I have to school these kids? How are you going to tell me that low cut Tim's on our... I just want to say for the record, <laughs> Wayno's about to help us clear this up. Yeah. I grew up in Flatbush. I've I had regular lie. ass Tim's. Why can't I show off my ankles if I want to? Uh, I didn't even know they made those type of Tim's. <laughs> That's your... That looks okay, crazy. Okay, okay, so Tim's one on one. Everything looks crazy. Can, can we pull crazy. up the Tim's? Can we pull up the Tim's? Can we pull the up the ones? Okay, so these are the ones that we the, actually do. The classics. These are the classics. These are, people call them the butters, mm -hmm. wheats, whatever you want to call them. These are the boots that we actually do. These are the ones that you have to but wear. But yo, I had like six pairs of these in high school. Exactly, and yesterday you didn't have those on. I didn't. So have can those. we go to the ones that Nadeska had on? And these aren't yo, the exact ones. I, Mine yo, were limited edition. There's, yeah, a, no, 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 there's a little no, sweater on the she top had on of the chuckers. <laughs> okay, so look, you got the double sole there, right? Mm -hmm. You got the double sole there, but we don't do the chuckers. You who's, don't. Who's we? We, we we is like they. Like, you know when people say they? But we here's the like thing they. about All we right. and they. Am I not we since I grew up in Flatbush? Don't you I get some creative are we, freedom? But no, you had you were in violation. You Damn. definitely was in violation for having those on. Do we have the, the other ones that we absolutely don't do at all? The butt nakeds. These are the butt nakeds. I've nakers. never in my life owned these. These are the these. butt nakeds. So are these worse than the ones I wore? Those are way worse. This is okay, an absolute good. violation. We call those the butt nakeds because they don't have a double sole and they don't have leather around the top. I should have just put on the bird metal. Those are the Tims that your moms get you when she doesn't want to pay the, the extra bread Tims? for the... Yeah. So the Tim's that we one. having a whole Tim breakdown. Man. <laughs> Yo, did you see how mad Listen, my friend was getting though? Like she felt disrespected. It, 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 it just reminds me that I'm doing a show with two people from y'all really from New York. Y'all New York, New York. Yeah, Jesus absolutely. Christ. I have Harlem tattooed th on my hand. <laughs> I, I think I've owned one pair of Tim. That's crazy. And I had to get it the fuck out of here. That shit was too heavy, man. Felt like I was walking with waist tied to my ankles. I ain't got time for that. I like walking on pillows, man. And oh, feel like stop I'm walking it. on clouds. That's Put why I rock with down, Yeezys, and, <laughs> Yeezys and Rachis. I don't know what type of, like, where y'all niggas This is why you can't, New York, this is walk, why you walk can't ever pothos? claim New York. I wear right. Tim's never claim you regular, like, Tim's, like, same way how I wear sneakers, I'm going to be wearing yeah. Tim's. Yo, as like, soon as it, it's like fall weather, you And I get a new Tim's pair on. every year, at least two pair every winter. How Plano was telling us that he plays basketball in Tim's. No, that's wild. That's an injury. That's an injury. When I was a kid, Yes, if you're outside and you win Tim's and you want to play ball, you're gonna play ball in right. Tim's. All yeah. right, now that we cleared that up, apparently right. I disrespected, <laughs> I violated some fucking. You violated. Code. I'm just gonna say I'm from Brooklyn. I'll do what I want. You'll be uh, all right. Craig, can you start the clock for us? Start the timer. Uh, let's get into Yo, this. Tim's are the equivalent for, to New Yorkers as high heels are to women, man. Yeah, I don't know how y'all do it, man. That's something else, but it's okay. What Dang. does Jersey do? We don't Uggs. do that. You guys Jersey. are Uggs. You're not a representative for Jersey. You're not a representative for Jersey. Uggs. No, no, chill. Right. Everybody's <laughs> watching this video like, what the fuck is this? Sorry, this is some Easter Yo, shit. this is why New York got roasted. Yo, they used to get roasted on um, World Star comments about like, yo, this is how New Yorkers act. Rats, do-rags. <laughs> why you stuck with rats? For real. And the stereotype comes from, yo, this is the no. most passionate we way we're going to be We embrace our stereotypes. Today. No. <laughs> talk about Tim's. No, but look. But, Jesus Christ. But honestly, I feel like maybe if we had a conversation with somebody from L.A. about Dickies or, or Chucks, they could break that down to us as well. So it's about a cultural thing where you come from. For me, I know the difference between the Tim's. It takes a learning process growing up in the hood. You feel me? I'll wear all the low cut Tim's I want. Yeah, no I've low never cut seen low cut Tim's. I show my ankles yeah, off yeah, as much as I on. want to. Right. Hey, man, yo, listen. <laughs> Will y'all trade in y'all Tim's if we secure a Birdman sponsorship for the Birdman look? Come on, man. Stop it. No, that would have to be a mega check. I'm going to tell you about securing the check. A mega check for me to wear some lugs. I'm, I'm about getting my bread, but not at the compromise of who I am. And we, me wearing those type of drinks is not who I am. Her, they're comfy. So. Yeah, can we start? Can we start? All right, hey, man, uh, listen, we got hip hop to talk. Listen, right. all right. So last week, uh, Drake appeared on LeBron's new show on HBO, The Shop. So he said the whole beef started because he told Kanye all of his deepest, darkest secrets, and then he told them to push a T, et cetera, et cetera. Push is not having it. He was on the Joe Budden podcast this week and said otherwise. He's saying it's actually Forty who leaked the info. Let's take a look. The information came from Forty. It didn't come from Kanye. Mm. 
at all. Okay. 40, 40, 40, 40 is sleeping with a woman. You know, he talks to her every, he talks to her daily, five, six hours a day. Oh, she must have a great personality. Yeah, bruh. Ultimately, speaks <laughs> about how he's disgruntled about certain things, uh, notor- uh, uh, notoriety and, and things involving involving Drake and, and his career, so on and so forth. To this young lady? Yes. Oh, with God. that, with that also came the fact that Drake has a child. Plot twist. All right, so Push is saying the reason he decided to do this, he really didn't like everything Drake said on the shop. He didn't like how they did the backlight and put the spotlight on his face as he was talking about 40. Um, so anyway, do you guys believe this? So then do we think Drake made that whole thing up? What's good, Act? Do you have, you know... You talked to Ops? Did you use your espionage skills <laughs> on this one yesterday? I had 40 immediately after I heard this. Okay. Immediately. Immediately. Now... <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Drake might have that nigga on a gag order. He didn't respond. I'm not gonna lie. But do I believe this man? Um, it sounds believable. Do I really believe it? No. And the reason why I don't believe it. Well, first of all, let, let me let me address why it sounds believable. Okay. Partially, Drake going to war on Kanye felt like felt like one of those things where like you go to war on a belief, and it could be a lie, but you stand on it. Mm-hmm. And in his mind, Drake Drake feels that Kanye did all this shit. And of course, you heard him on the shop. He's matching certain stuff up, and he's like, "Wait, I feel like I'm being played. I'm 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 being used as a fool by this guy. Now I'm about to go on the offensive, right?" So he he, didn't, he never really said he had concrete proof of what happened, but everything lining up the way it did, he believed it, right? right. Here in this, this could have happened. So that's why I'm saying this this could be believed. But I'm not going to believe it. And the reason why is that I think Pusha, this is why Drake probably has to just, just chill. This thing of Pusha is playing a mind game <laughs> that is going to fuck you up, man. This guy, and you can hear him through the whole episode just document how he's torturing Drake. Because these things do affect Drake. Mm-hmm. Like Drake, his legacy is very important to him. I said that during the Meek thing. However, people got past that. Meek, of course, the record didn't really connect the one to no record, but he didn't really do some of the things that uh, Push is doing. And clearly Push is realizing, I'm going to plant a seed to fuck up what's going on within the camp. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, Drake kind of did that with trying to plant a seed with Meek, with him and his girl, with Nikki at the time. Mm-hmm. Is that your tall, your girl's tall? Like, he was he was trying to cause a disturbance there, right? So, for me, on contrary to popular belief, and everybody thinks that Pusha tells me every single thing That's he knows. That's just academics. Pusha told him. That's just no, academics. No, no, no. I don't know about I, 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 no. I know why Drake blogged you. Pusha got it from you. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I found this out with the world yesterday. Uh-huh. Um, I do, I, I do think it's very believable because nothing will slip you off of your pivot like a woman, especially in a vulnerable woman, moment of a woman that you're dealing with. And I think that that's very believable. Isn't that ironic? All of the music Drake is made about taking girls' phones and no right. pillow talking secrets. Well, uh, right, but um, yeah, definitely the taking the phone thing. That's that's for you know the the, the groupy chicks that come along. Yeah, and all but the that. pillow talking in general. Is but pillow like... talking, I do believe, I do believe that <clears throat> it's a high possibility that this is true, and only because everybody, everything is not always good with everybody now. I know that Drake and 40 are very close, right? Mm-hmm. But I also could believe that he might have some things to say. Everybody has something to say about some profession that they're in. Right. It doesn't mean that he's shitting on Drake, but if he's saying, yeah, you know, Drake got a kid, I could believe that. I could believe that. The timing is what makes me not want to believe it. Why? Because this is a chess play. But mm-hmm. he's saying it's in response to Drake doing the HBO yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So he says, listen... I've sat back and allowed you to be tortured and wonder where I got this from. You're going at Kanye, you're going crazy. Like, you're basically, you've left Adidas. Like, like you're doing all type of things. You're racking your brain trying to figure out how the hell did I get all this info on you? Now you're willing to even pay for info on me. Yeah, oh yeah, and, that's another thing you talked about. And, and in reality, when you do the shop, you say, the thing that sent me over the edge was the, the fact that he mentioned my best friend. Mm-hmm. This is my best friend wait, he mentioned. Wait, now, wait. I'm going to throw a monkey wrench in it. You were mad about your best friend? 
Well, it's your best friend the reason why you got sold down the river. Right. And so so again, the timing of it mm. makes me um makes me think, you know what? Even if it's not true, it's almost checkmate. It's very entertaining. It's, it's, it's almost it, checkmate. It's, but, it's, but but if if I'm Drake though, mm -hmm. you get to probably really figure out if it is though. And there were certain things that Okay, so that he's go ahead. So now if he mentions anything that only 40 would know, then Drake would know. Like, I mean, of course, Drake is not gonna come out and say, yo, it was 40, because they're gonna yeah. probably keep, with, if, even if there is issues, or it may not be, right? Mm -hmm. He's gonna keep it to themselves. But if it's something that's said distinctive that 40, only 40 knows within those conversations, mm -hmm. then Drake would know, but we'd probably never know that. But Well, well he kind of said certain things. He said, well, um, 40 told this young woman about the meeting when everyone like planned up to go meet the child, this and third. Mm -hmm. If Drake never told Kanye that, <laughs> right? right? If Drake right, right. never told Kanye exactly. that, there is some type of leak that is coming from maybe 40 talking to some young woman, right? Absolutely. And also, to be honest, if you're really best friends and, and that's your guy for life, mm -hmm. yeah. like if that's the way it happened, because you know, you know, everybody's gonna sit and act like, oh, we never pillow talk. Man, 99% of niggas pillow talk. You get me? 99? Wow, that's a high volume. That's where you spill all your Wayno, secrets? No, no, hold on. Wayno, <laughs> Wayno, if, if, you're, if you're with, I'm not talking about just any random girl, but if you're with a woman that you're going to be together for a long time or your wife, you, you're telling me that you might not mention certain I stuff say, I say, I'm just saying, that's a difference. You talking with your, listen, you being with your women, your woman that you're with, your yeah. wife potentially and everything and sharing shit with her is different than you talking to some random chick you fucking. Okay. That's two that's two totally different things. That's and two totally different things. And a lot of a lot of people fall due to that from in every aspect of life. Now, he also went on to say about with Kanye with him being neutral. That's why I feel like I right. neutral, but he says they're fake friends. That's why this is yeah. I don't feel like Kanye is like we're taking all the blame away from him. Sounds like he still had a hand in this. I think I think Kanye has some sort of hand in it as well, but I do I, I think that Kanye tries to be so fucking kumbaya mm -hmm. that Drake's I mean um Push's story is more believable about the whole 40 thing only because Kanye tries to play he tries to play both sides of the fence a lot. Oh he oh. apologize look, he's apologizing in the midst of the fucking beef. Mm -hmm. He goes in and says, Yo, I'm sorry, this down and third. You don't do that in the middle of whatever it is that y'all going through. Uh, a great point that was mentioned by Pusha when trying to deflect. And by the way, again, I'm looking at this as a chess play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The rapping is done. It's all about perception. And I'm not going to lie, Drake gave a slight twist, even though I'm not too sure if everyone was going to say, oh, okay, you're right for how you handle this beef, because he's still going to get critiqued for not dropping the song. Mm -hmm. But this Pusha interview, which this shit was great, it, it basically reframed how we thought about how Drake handled stuff. Right. How we thought about Drake saying there's no rules. Yet, clearly, or, 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 or Drake saying there are rules. But clearly, Drake, you were willing to do some of the stuff that you thought they did to you. Mm -hmm. You just didn't execute. Right. And it's really trying to shape public perception. So, I mean, it's... I said it, it before. He got into the wrong weight class. Like he got into the wrong. Drake Dr did. Drake got into the wrong weight class. I, Drake has always been able to handle himself. Like okay, he had he he had the thing with Common, right? He had the mm -hmm. thing with Common, and what 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 year was that? Um, stay scheming, right? That was the stay scheming verse. He handled the situation with Meek. I think that he underestimated he underestimated Pusha T, or he's a very calculated person, mm -hmm. and he might have not calculated. To where he thought it was gonna go, cause that shit was a shock for all of us. He didn't calculate us. how much he had to lose, essentially. He didn't, like we were saying yesterday. He didn't calculate how much he had to lose. He also didn't. When when Pusha said, "I racked up the wins," right. as to, yo, you I, explaining yourself like all the time when having someone step in to end the beef. He feels like when, those when, are all. when the blackface shit came out, and I said that I was like, yo, where does it? Where are we at? Where you going on your IG story? Like you didn't post that. You put it on your IG story about what you had done prior and all. Mm -hmm. That is because now you have to explain yourself. Now you have to, you have some vulnerability. A chink in the armor, but Drake admitted to that, right? Yeah. Two things. <clears throat> this whole interview was also to refocus it on, nigga, we see all that Kanye shit you're doing, but what about me? What, I, I slapped you, nigga, what up? <laughs> you, gonna, you gonna still try to get my guy? I slapped you, what's up? Mm. So that's the whole thing where 
Push is refocusing this on himself. Like, mm. yeah, don't don't say it's Kanye. Don't say J Prince. You get me? Because if that's all Kanye shit, cool. That that's Kanye. Y'all been y'all been beefing. Y'all yeah. y'all been fake friends from the get go. We get it. But what about what I said to you? Mm. There ain't, and he was inviting. He said, "Yo, there's not there's nothing that I don't want you to put out. Yeah. You did your homework. You offered a hundred thousand. Talk to my ex DJ. That's you talked to everybody. Yeah, the hundred thing is interesting. We thought it was sort of maybe like just a general fishing net. But then when he's saying his friends are calling him, like, "Yo, someone just offered me a hundred k." Yeah, when you're in the call. It's like, damn. But also, you know what? In trying to like prove that maybe Kanye wasn't the source, and I still think that Ye probably contributed with the info. Mm. He did say something that was kind of, it made sense, unless this is calculated, right? Because I got to think about everything he's saying as possibly like really calculated and premeditated. But he said, he said, if, if Ye gave me the info, and I'm going by your words, he was talking about Dre. He said, you sent Ye a picture of your son. You think I wouldn't have your son as an album cover or, or, mm. or, the, or the cover art? Push his own that type of time. <laughs> Look what he used for his album cover, Daytona. Yeah, Adonis is the album cover to this song to you. And I'm exposing your son to the world. That kind of made me think, maybe, it could, maybe yeah, it, it played into the story of, yeah. played into the story of, yeah, I got the info that everything is confirmed, whatever, whatever, that it's your child and y'all are going to visit and whatever, whatever, there's deals that, in the works. I mean, I, that's, why, that's why the whole, what Drake said bothered him the most was kind of shocking to me because... I was like, damn, I thought that he would be upset about this shit with his child. Now, of course, he admits to him having his child and all that, but Pusha also made you... Th that whole situation made him change how he made music because he said, what, Scorpion was 60% done? Mm -hmm. And then he said all these other records came after, right? right? So, in a sense, I wouldn't say he, uh, he definitely didn't bring him back enough because Drake was already there, but he definitely has caused a disturbance in his whole shit. And that's why I said it was from the start. Mm -hmm. You disturb the money. No, Drake don't lose none, but this if this Adidas rollout was coming with his son and all this other shit, he disturbed all of that. Well, at if that we're time. playing chess right now, yeah. so Drake took a couple shots in those freestyles, he said yeah. some stuff on stage, then he waited to do the LeBron interview with some prestige and a backlight. So here comes Pusha with the Joe Biden interview. What's Drake's next move? Silence? Like, how do you even counter this now? You said your piece, you have to let it go. Yeah, I think, he has, rock, I, think, I think he has to let it go. I think he has to let it Drake go. Drake has to let it go now. It's it's one of those things. Shit, I told him when everything, like once I was here, you know what I mean? I talked to a couple people in this camp, and then when I talked to him, I, I said, listen, you got to, if this is a Kanye thing and Kanye snakes you, mm -hmm. you got to do an interview on it. And I wholeheartedly believe that, and I still believe it now. So, and he had told me, like, yo, it's going to come in his time, mm -hmm. and clearly that was a shot because right. he finally explained it. But beyond that, you can't go tit for tat with Pusha T. Yeah, like you, can't. you, you. We have realized that you're still Teflon. Like, like what I did realize though in the effect or the after effect of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Seeing a lot of OG speak out. I see uh, Styles P. Yeah, on the but, rules but, or no but, rules. And, and a lot of people like they're they're basically almost putting the the feeling out there that Drake, this balance shit's not for you. Exactly, all right, you so look, have to quit. look, yeah. Con Conor McGregor and fucking Floyd Mayweather, of course, all that MMA shit, we know what he could do. You got in the wrong weight class. You got in that ring and see you couldn't endure. And that's how I feel about the whole situation. He st we start talking about rules. That's why I said it's like, okay, if there's rules, then whenever you, because he didn't say the most disrespectful thing about Push his wife, but he said her name. Yeah. So at the point where you say her name, now, and like Styles said, he could take that a whole nother route. Like, oh, now nah, I'm on a different type of time with this shit. I'm going to run down on you. He didn't do that. Yeah. Okay, since we going there, because like I said, Drake challenged him on his pen. Even Meek. Meek didn't say the, he, the, the whole piss thing and all that shit. That was later on. But he challenged the pen. Oh, you got somebody writing for you. Yeah. I found out that the verse you gave me, I got the reference track for it. He challenged the pen. It seems like when Drake says when somebody says something about Drake, he's just very bothered because he's at such a high profile. He doesn't like to be challenged. It's a legacy, right? Right. No, but but I understand. I would have felt the same exact way. Mm. I would have felt the same exact way. And and again, you got to mesh both stories together and realize that both of them are spinning in their own way to make the, themselves look favorable. But if you play with the timeline of how some of these records got, like, I would feel a certain type of way. 
I'm working on my album. I come to you. You say you're not dropping no shit. Mm -hmm. I again, yeah, all of that, around. absolutely, but, all of that looks no, no, crazy. So right. because of that, I am gonna re release something to address it. I'm feeling, yeah. I'm feeling manipulated. You right, get me? Right, right, right. Now, that's where, wherever it went from there, with Pusha jumping in, mm -hmm. you weren't, you weren't prepared to handle that, and, and that's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's obviously true. So, uh, whatever. Honestly, listen, you can't win them all, yo. You yeah, cannot but it's win them probably all. not over, although it should be. I mean, you can't win them point. all. I mean, at, you can't win them all. I mean, like when Jay, he went on a tirade and attacked Nas and Mob Deep and everybody else he had a problem with, and then Nas came with Ether. Mm. Like, you can't, like, you cannot win them all, no matter, and Jay was still the guy. Like, he still was the top guy in the game, but you can't, you, you gotta pick your battles carefully. Hey, I'm not gonna lie. The, the way how everyone's flipping this, uh, I know people say there's no rules in battles, mm -hmm. but there are rules. That's what Drake said. And now everyone's saying, oh, really, Aubrey? <laughs> yeah. Now you acknowledge that there's some yeah, rules in yeah, this shit. Because, well, because he said a lot of fly shit to people. Uh, let, let's actually show how you're not following the rules. Mm -hmm. You've had a writer. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're throwing things at him where, where no. I think this is where that exposal with Meek, it'll mm -hmm. always live forever. And this is him also realizing his own mortality. Like, yeah, nigga, you could bleed. Like, you're, you're the biggest star, Absolutely. but we could still look at you a certain type of way. And whatever this record is now, it's well, about to get buried because at this point, it's been so overhyped right. that it probably won't be. And, and, and I mean, and, and that also, like, what I didn't like with the HBO interview is like, oh, by a hip hop purist. I mean, this is hip hop, mm -hmm. right? Let, let's not. And I understand that you make like these great, amazing songs that live on the charts for months to come, and they're not all you barring up and rapping. But this is hip hop, and let's not downgrade the principles of where hip hop is just because you're losing the game. Right? You know what I mean? Like, don't oh, okay, to a hip hop purist, or and then LeBron is saying I'm a hip hop historian. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he he said that he's like I'm a hip hop historian. You're offering up 100k for dirt, then yeah, you can't like, say. You Come can't on. talk about rules. Yeah, you can't talk. You can't talk about rules, yo. You tried because you tried to break the rules yeah, as well. Yeah, you just you didn't get the dirt. You couldn't. You couldn't put shit together yourself. And if even if he does have something, it's still contrived from a certain place. So, mm -hmm. hey, I'm I'm looking to see how things continue, especially with Pusha Push putting out this information. I don't think this is over yet. Not at all. If we know how Drake treated situations like that. Again, of course, uh, 40 isn't like a Quentin, but Drake stopped fucking with Quentin purely on the speculation that he could have been the person to leak the reference track to Meek, right? You could have been the person that got my enemies some shit mm. that they're using against me, right? We get to find some drama and all that, but like, and, and that's why you see Quentin, he's a little salty about the situation. He's like, yo, I'm a new rapper. Like, I definitely, I wrote a whole fucking letter saying I didn't write for you. I'm not trying to piss you off, but in the end, you want you won't fuck with me because I was affiliated with the information coming out about you. Yeah. So it was um, messy on all sides. That whole shit was all. Yeah, but but, but <laughs> this, like he's kind of innocent yeah. to some extent. Nah, he's not innocent at all. How? Yeah, that nigga's not innocent, dog. What? Like no, I'm, I'm for, for anything he did get, did to Drake. Yo, he's not, and everybody played a part. Quentin, he did the reference tracks. So at, right. he recorded the reference yeah. track. So he's innocent. Where's he? Oh, innocent he means at? in terms of like letting it out to the public. Letting it out to seem the public. Like no, he didn't betray like, 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 Drake like, don't fuck with him. It's, Dog, listen, it's it's a lot to that story. He, you think he ain't go to nobody and say I'm writing for dude? He not paying me? You 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 don't think that happened? Okay, no, no. But all right, then. So don't don't you can't niggas new in like let's you, not excuse you know Quentin. industry talk like niggas talking industry. I'm talking about putting out to the public. Putting out to the public, but it got to the public because he was running his fucking mouth. Are we no, sure it was him? All right, let's nah, leave Quentin alone. Let's that, move forward on this one. I don't know if that's... Who sends it to me? How, yeah. how drama get it? How drama get it? You, you think Quentin gave it to him? Yo, drama signed wait, wait, wait. Quentin. How drama... All right, how drama get it? Quentin, Quentin did them shits before he was around drama. Well, it he was... He did that shit... He did all that shit for Drake before he got in Mean Street Studios. All of that. Well, from what I heard, he had it within his possession. Unless you're telling me different. But Listen, that's the old shit. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's some old shit, but stop acting like he he not innocent. Everybody play everybody played a part in that shit. Drake handled that situation totally mm -hmm. well. This didn't go to that same degree. Yeah. And everybody's not going in every single situation or every bout that they get into. So Drake, he should just leave it alone and keep doing his thing. Let's see. Nah, but, but if I'm if I'm Drake, I, I gotta figure out the next people move. Are, I, I gotta figure out people around me and see what's going on too. Hey. Because again, some shit like that 
fucked him up like this. He's he's having these like these little bumps in the road where he's fucking up his career to some extent. Even though I think he makes better music when he's mad. Like he's when, fine. When he's <laughs> Yo, think it's fine. The, about, yo, the bills honestly, will be paid. He's gonna be yo, right. Honestly, think he's about fine. the songs he made after he thought Kanye snaked him. They're the best records on that. Yo, he did my hunger. feelings, mob ties, yeah. emotionless, yeah. all the hot shit. Yeah. Imagine an album without Kanye snaking him, man. All right. All right, y'all, we'll wait for the next chess move. We're sure it's coming. In the meantime, on to a police officer harassing a 12-year-old. So I don't know if you guys remember a little C-note he was on Ellen Show once. So um, a cop in where Cobb County um, arrested him for trying to sell his CDs at the mall and got unnecessarily aggressive. Uh, let's take a look. H&M at 227. Stop. Chase, where are you, Chase? You're he got his hands on me. We upstairs. You're about to go to jail. You're going to go to a youth detention center if you don't yeah. stop. And I have He's not doing and anything. I he don't. Have, he had his rights. He's not even doing anything right now, sir. Okay. And I have his father on the phone, and you won't even speak to him. Yep. All right. So things definitely got worse in the full video, and he was eventually charged with felony obstruction, misdemeanor obstruction, and criminal trespassing for trying to sell his CDs. He's 12 years old. Obviously, um, this is getting a lot of attention online. Just disappointing to see something like this still happening. Yeah, this is ridiculous. I have a son that's around the same age, and um, I can't I can't imagine how things would be if the roles were reversed. There was a black kid, I mean, a black cop grabbing and holding a young white kid that was not se- resisting, not he was resisting. Just calmly talking. This this young man is looking. He's he's making eye contact with this officer the whole time, and the officer can't even look at him. What's what's really unsettling is. I know like in the mall is they have their policies because I've been in situations where like just taking a, a cameraman taking a picture in the mall is a big no no. It's a, a big issue. So at this point, you're a fucking adult. You're a grown ass man. You can't if the kid did anything that you felt was out of pocket, you can't go to the kid and say, excuse me. Mm-hmm. You know, dad, I have a dialogue with him. I just was shooting a video with one of my young artists and a cop pulled up. And he asked us, do you guys have a permit? I said, no, we actually don't. We'll only be here for 45 minutes to an hour. Is it possible that we can have this time? Mm-hmm. I understand I don't have a permit. He was like, you know what? It's not a problem at all. You, you got to be a, a fucking adult in the matter. And I feel like a lot of these a lot of these um, police officers, I don't know this man from a can of paint, but have you ever dealt with a young black child before yeah. in any other Just instance any than kid. this? A any a kid. A kid, it's sickening. Yeah, and, and I can't imagine... St- at that point, I wouldn't be able to hold my emotion if any officer put their hands on my child in any way. I wouldn't know how to handle it rationally. There is no rationalization when, you, when you're when you harming my child, yeah. you know? Uh, situation, police in, in any community goes a lot better if there's respect. And right. if, if the officer respects the people he's policing and respect, you gotta understand and respect uh, the culture that you're actually the law or, or your your the authority of right? right but just like being abrasive and like just kind of since you have a badge and, and a gun you're like just doing what you want by force right. that's how that's how these these relationships between police and citizen that's how we get fucked up yeah. now that kid he don't want to see no cops something happened to him he don't want to talk to no cops yeah. he right. don't handle it himself right it starts here so uh uh Police in a community, this is where the cops got to get a little bit more training. Like, there's a way you can handle that, and you could also make it a teachable moment. You could, even if, like, I get it, because to me, oh. ain't nothing wrong with that, what that kid's doing. Yeah. But I get it. It's, it's breaking the law in your books. It's like you jaywalking. Could, you, like, is it what that, what you that? could do, you could, you could send a message. You, you got to deal with attack. Yeah. It, 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 like, to Windows point, the fact that he wouldn't even look him in the eye. He wouldn't even look at him. You feel like a tough guy, he, like he, roughing he, up he, a kid he wouldn't and even like look at him. That's what I'm saying. Like this young, this young man is sitting here looking dead in his face. He didn't pull his arm yeah. once. He didn't yell. He's talking to you, and you saying, "If you don't stop, you're gonna go to a, def- a, a, de- a youth detention center." And they charge him with felony obstruction. Felony obstruction. Well, good. What light that can come out of this is way prior to us even having this incident. Mm-hmm. This kid was on Ellen, yeah. which is a big platform to be on. Mm-hmm. Maybe she comes and has something to say and uses her platform to help him again. Because when we talk about America and entrepreneurship and just people chasing their dreams, this kid is 12 years old. Mm-hmm. He's going out. He's selling CDs of music that he's making. He's pushing himself. Of course there isn't you know many rules or parameters for how you can sell a cd it, on your own in a in a um public place like a mall but what is he doing that that's wrong mm-hmm. at worst you could have said shorty 
I understand that you're selling your CDs, but people are complaining. Could you just leave or could you just walk down the hall? Something. Why are you putting your hands on it? You know? Let's see what happened to yeah, yeah, the way Probably you talk to people, right? man. You avoid a lot of these situations, yeah. right? Like you just grab somebody, be like, it's not. It fucks up the relationship, as I said. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But then on the flip side, it's good that we have some positive stories. Like uh, Wayne at the BET uh, Hip Hop Awards talking about the cop that, that saved, saved his, his life, life right. even if he was off duty, that he still checks in on him. Now he's asking for a job. So, you know, it's not that they're not all evil, but guys like this really fuck it up. Hey, right. hey y'all ever see, like, there's this, this, uh, there's a couple of videos of this cop. Like, he'll he'll go in the community and he'll play basketball with the kids. Yeah. See, Norman, the, 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 he's he might him. Yeah. Yo, he got, he got the most respect. Oh, you, you, yeah. you, you know what that does? When you interact with the people like that, you don't only come across as this big bad guy trying to lock them up. Mm -hmm. but when that, when something happens, they, they're able to talk to you. So you get me? It's, it's, they don't look at you as some other shit. With that story, I heard that 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 young officer, he was. They told him to stop doing stuff because he was doing stuff in uniform. Remember, like he did the thing where he was because everybody like the first time I saw him was remember like. He act like he put the kid in his car, yeah. and the kid jumped out, and he ran. It was like he was chasing him. And then we found out that this dude is a big fixture in his community. Mm -hmm. And then they started, I, I, from what I heard, is that they told him to stop doing the videos because he was doing it in uniform. And it's like, that's just ridiculous. Social media, if y'all using social media to lock people up, mm -hmm. use social media to change the perception of policing. Yep. Right? And I, I just can't jack that. No, 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 no. way, no how, you know? Let's see, hopefully you do better someday. Yeah. Um, uh, earlier this week, or last week, we talked about Jonah Lucas uh, dropping his product, Project ADHD. I thought it was coming this week. I saw him yesterday. He confirmed that it's actually not. But he did release a new saw single it? called I Love. was in these streets? I was in these streets. Wayno, you should be so proud of me. I was there <laughs> yesterday. Uh, now, Beats, uh, Beats One had their big launch event in New York yesterday with Zayn Ebro. I'm part of yeah. that family now, doing some stuff for them. So I was over I there. I met you. Flip De Niro. He said, what up to you, Ak? He said, Stop talking crazy. The usual shit rappers say about you <laughs> when I run into them out there. It's a little industry shit, man. You should have flipped off, though, right? Huh? I think you nah, he was joking. Regular? He was cool. He said what up to yeah. you guys. Man, the desk could get in hella industry on us now. <laughs> oh, stop it. Okay, let's just get back to this. I was just trying to make the point that Jonah said the project is not coming right now. Mm -hmm. but he did drop this new song, I Love. So we were just talking about how lyrically there's no debate that he's amazing, but fans are asking why he doesn't get enough mainstream love. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this song. Get away from me. If I was you, I'd watch what you say to me. Snakes all in my bed, wanna lay with me. This ain't no motherfucker, why you play with me? Don't play with me, this the only thing I love. I love, 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 love. Okay. It has a nice bounce to it. What do you guys think? You Didn't I tell you, I mean, this motherfucker need a hit, man. And, <laughs> and this sounded like it could be a hit. Hey. Hey, hey, let me tell you this. And this is what people be, especially getting fucked up about me. Bro, you could definitely make a hit and still be lyrical. This is how you fucking do yeah. it. People just think that when people like hearing songs that sound good melodically, mm -hmm. <laughs> you are sacrificing bars. No. Because Kendrick some is... people do. This is very hard to do, I think, what he pulled off here. No, nah, well, well, I think this. if you're going to be in the music business and yeah. care about the shit that comes along with the hit records and you're going to care about the accolades, you're going to have to thread the needle. You're going to have to find a way how to satisfy a core audience, and of course not every song, mm -hmm. but you gotta deliver one, mm -hmm. you feel right. me? Right. Deliver one that people could bounce to, of course you're not selling out like you're dumbing the lyrics all the way down, you, you're lyrical a little bit, and dope song. Now it'll help push the project, other people that might have not heard your project, they're gonna check it out like, you know what, yo, this dude could rap, yeah. and he made a hit, so what? great move by him, I like the song, Dre played like 30 times, and I'm like, I feel like I was about to say that. <laughs> um, I like this song. Yeah. I like this song, and I'm, and I'm glad that, you know, after a while, like, he was doing, like, a bunch of, like, freestyles and a lot of people, people beats, I was like, mm -hmm. Jordan, we get it. Like, you could really rap. You're right. killing everybody beats. We need something for me that's original, and where the song, I think that's exactly what I said, the song isn't overshadowed by the video. Right. Love the song, actually. Right. Um, I thought it was dope. I listened to the song this morning. I didn't get a chance to check out the whole video, but I did listen to the song. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, remember we always talk about like making these records. I feel like every hit record has some sort of relatable factor in there. Mm -hmm. Where like when you had Chief Keef, he had Don't Like, right? Yeah. And he talked about all the shit he didn't like. You got Cardi B, she has I Like, right? Mm -hmm. And she talks about all the things she, she likes. He's talking about I Love. So I think that every record has to have some sort of relatable factor. Join, of course, we can't question his pen. You know what I mean? Always shows up. Um, 
it's kind of ironic that we was just talking about The timing about this. of it is really incredible. Really because he pulled really up, he's perfect. like, I saw you guys, I got the song. I was like, I just heard it. I feel like you, the yeah. timing was amazing. The time was perfect. But I mean, I'm, I'm rooting for that young man. Yeah. I think that he's very dope. Um, like I said, I'm just waiting to see what he has to bring. Yeah, so totally. it sounds like we'll get more songs from this. And he said he's sort of being cautious in the build up to his like full official studio album. Yeah, right, right. So right. this is still not billed as a project, but we'll stay tuned. Dope. Um, uh, let's see. So we recently previewed a Future and Juice World's collaboration on Fine China. And apparently now they might have a full joint project on the way called <laughs> World on Drugs, tentatively titled World on Drugs. Um, I don't remember. Were you guys excited about the, the track they did together? Would you want a full project? I want a full project from no two people. He <laughs> like, said, Future, need to drop their own solo yeah, Future just said we just did enough heat to drop a tape uh, this week. Oh, it yeah. might come soon. There we go. There we go. <laughs> right. I, me, I want, like, I do like drink they dropped projects. Dropped the track listing, too. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just crazy. I do like yeah, drink yeah. projects depending on who it is. Um, there it is. Mm hmm. Yeah. I do like joint projects depending on who it is. For this one, I just feel like I don't know enough about Juice World and I haven't got enough from Juice World to mm -hmm. put him in something with Future, but I also can't discount that. Because at the time when I really got onto Future, Free Bricks with him and Gucci came out. You know what I mean? I didn't know as much as he had, so it made me kind of revisit. We just got to wait and see what it's going to be. Random question for you guys. When you were talking about the cover out with all the drug imagery and all those conversations you always have, of course, when Rundown Russ talks about pills <laughs> and all that, people feel away. What mm -hmm. if Future one day was like, cool, I'm done, I'm clean, no more drugs, no nothing? Well, how I'm, would that uh, I'm looking How would that affect the game? I'm looking to see what the... Uh, message that's gonna be sent out in this album because I seen like it was it was some art it wasn't a cover up but it was like whatever it could be your drug money's your drug whatever whatever and that might be a different approach to it because when I'm seeing world on drugs I'm like nigga you don't see niggas dying I hear the drugs <laughs> please don't tell me you about to get on some dirty sprite let's promote some shit again even though he still does all the time um, just more subtly if that's a word <laughs> but tis uh, I'm. I'm thinking that the message might be a little bit different based on some of the things I saw. Like, it felt like they were trying to say that this isn't a druggy album. Mm -hmm. This is about whatever your drug is, whether it's well, working out, whether it's uh, money, well, it, well, it could be whatever. And, and if, it, if it's using that type of metaphor, I'm cool with it. Well, let's credit, you know, J. Cole with doing that first with K.O.D. because K.O.D. had three meanings and it was kids on drugs and a lot of people assumed that he was just going to be rapping or bashing mm -hmm. all the kids of today being on drugs, but he had that same narrative about uh, what that meant and it meant um, your drug could be anything. That's exactly what it was like verbatim. It yeah. was like, you know, your, your drug could be whatever it is you're addicted to, whether it's money or sex or, you know, he explained it more in depth at the, at the live show. But, um, I don't know if uh, Future is going to take an awareness approach. I, ironically, like, I, even though drugs is not a good thing, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I don't like to hear Future rap about drugs. I actually do. Um, but I, I don't look, I'm not looking for no awareness with this. Like, yeah. I'm not looking for, but I, I wouldn't be I mad would at Future. I would just be curious because I feel like if, coming from certain people, people mm -hmm. wouldn't care about Future being like a godfather at this point. Yeah, I'm just curious how I, that would affect things if he took a sharp left turn. I wouldn't be mad at it. I wouldn't be mad at it because like, you know, he is a he is a father and all that. And I'm yeah. pretty sure he doesn't want his kids on drugs and, and, or around them in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But we got to see. We'll see. Uh, uh, more than that, I'm ready to hear Future's next solo album. Me too. <laughs> um, Beast Mode 2. Uh, it didn't get the reviews that I, that I think he was anticipating it would get. Mm -hmm. Also, in the last like three years, he's dropped like three or four duo albums. This is about to be the third or fourth, which is mm -hmm. had one with uh, with Thug, one with Drake, now one with Juice World. Mm -hmm. Of course, the last time I remember him dropping solo projects was when he did the Future and Hendrix. Like, we want to follow a Future. Like, you can stop like with this duo shit for a little bit. Yeah. Give us a solo album, my guy. Yeah, he also had the Superfly soundtrack that he was heavily on. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for some more future music, you know. But I don't like, I, of course, I don't like future stepping out of, outside of who he is. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I love him for, for the type of music he makes. Like, the shit that he makes that... And, and he does have shit where he talks about stuff. You know what I mean? Like, future come from the street and he got a lot of real street shit. I think that's why I remember we seen the kind of the frustration. I, it was kind of focused on somebody saying that he birthed a lot of these people, but it yeah. was focused on one person. But a lot of these guys got their styles from future as well. Well... If you listen to his music, a lot of times he admits he's an addict. Maybe, again, maybe not awareness. Maybe he'll talk about how the hell he's dealing with it. My favorite song of his, which is a 
classic. This is probably the number one drug song of all time, Codeine Crazy. Uh, he admitted, he said, I'm an addict and I can't even help it. So I'm, I'm, hopefully maybe he'll talk about just how he's coping through it. You never know. Hopefully. All right, we'll see. Tell me like, some trap nigga shit. Sounds yeah. like this project might be coming soon, but for a future solo album, we'll see. You guys ready for some more Vic Mensa? Um, people <laughs> what? are still pissed. People are still Bro, pissed. how are we still talking about this nigga? <laughs> right. Um, all right, so we can move past it. Then he released a song called Empathy. Oh, Empathy. hell no. Nah, we ain't talking about nah, All right, man. next topic then. Quick hits time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shout out to Vic. Um, all right, so during a sit down with AP, Quavo confirmed that Culture 3 will drop at the top of 2019. Big surprise. Uh, the Migos movement keeps going. <laughs> What's good, Ak? Why you look confused? Come on, man. <laughs> bro. This nigga's not taking no breaks. Yeah, they're not taking Why no breaks. They they... Yo, they might. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. Yo, I feel like. You know what, and, and I don't want to just re, uh, regurgitate something I've heard somewhere else, but I heard Joe say, say this yesterday on, on this podcast with uh, Pusha, and I think it's kind of right, man. These motherfuckers is dropping every week, man, and they're not stopping. <laughs> and I don't know if that idea w was what Kanye used or whatever, but, like, I've been watching, like, I love watching K Coach K and P. Y'all yeah, know, I use yes, references in, yeah. yeah. And they've been teasing like three, four projects that they haven't announced. And I'm like, what more is to come? Mm. Right? They're like, new Cardi single coming. I'm like, all right, I get it, I get it. And yeah. Yachty's coming tomorrow, right? Or Yachty's Yachty. tomorrow. And yeah. then, like, they're throwing some more stuff in. And they keep throwing that City Girls album's coming soon. I'm like, well, yeah, wait and until they she a, gets and out. They got a lot of guys that's on, like, I wouldn't say like the, the priority list, but they got the young guys that they got in development. The Marlo finish. Marlo, yeah. Off. They got God Marlo. They got a lot of guys that's in development, which again, the reason why I'm not mad at it is because like the Migos are very different from Baby, mm -hmm. and Baby's astronomically different than Yachty. And I mean, Cardi, she's a part of the camp, but this affiliation is not, you don't, when you look at Cardi, you don't generally think QC, like she's on the label. Yeah, right. But, um, I'm not mad at it. And, and the reason why I'm not mad at it is because if they're satisfying their fan base, I mean, I've seen Master P do this. We've seen Death Row do this. We've seen Bad Boy do this at one point in time. You know, everybody has their run. So if they on their run and they feel like they understand exactly what it is they're accomplishing, mm -hmm. I'm all for it for their fan base. But all right, well. Man, I'm not going to lie. Whenever this label deal or, or whatever the requirements is done between QC and capital the next re-up check is gonna be fucking amazing <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm curious to see again it's not in the days of when master p was getting these crazy ass splits and all that and um i'm, I'm wondering how a new deal with that type of, it's an empire i'm gonna call it an empire mm -hmm. how that would be structured um i think, be it, is, to I th me. I think it is like the same as when master p and them was doing it it's just a different a, di a different structure mm -hmm. you know how di how deals are structured they're very different now but like you said, cash money? But, but, but well, cash money was just like... Well, but I'm pretty sure... doing listen, production, like TV production and stuff. I'm pretty sure, I mean, even when it comes to recording, they have their own studio, so I'm pretty sure they're only invoicing themselves. You know what I mean? They're only continuously paying themselves to keep the shit going. So they're, they're banking a lot. And I don't know what they're streaming and their percentages and splits are, but their leverage is they running a lot of the game. Mm -hmm. And when you have that type of leverage, you could negotiate for basically whatever it is you want to make somebody else a partner. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that this, it started out with, it's gonna change and it's gonna change again and it's gonna change in their favor. I'm not gonna lie, I think I finally understand why them, them other niggas that used to be on QC that didn't really blow, blow up, right. they probably looking back looking salty as hell like- I should've chilled the, out. <laughs> not, well, not that, but like, how the fuck you doing this for everybody that knew that comes in? Why didn't it happen to me? Well, I think, <laughs> and this is, you know, me not knowing facts, just me watching as a fan, I mm -hmm. think that every, everybody's not meant. Like, I've worked with a lot of different artists. Some have worked, some haven't. And they might have been, the ones that are all winning might have been meant for how they structured it. Mm -hmm. Other ones, like an OG Mako. OG Mako, he might have been better off not signing a QC and staying independent doing his own thing because he uh, is another one that was way different from the Migos and all of them, you know? Mm -hmm. So everything doesn't work for everybody. I don't think that people could look and say, why you ain't do it for me? I think it's like, okay, Take whatever you learned there and move on your own path at right. this point. Um, just last thought. I'm glad that that is pretty much like like this conglomerate and like label powerhouse coming out of Atlanta. I'm looking for something to pop off from a label perspective where they're just like uh, a factory of just creating new talent. 
on the East Coast? Well, I I think another one that's that's to come is going to be Slaughter, Slaughter Gang. I think 21 has been quiet for a long time because he's going to drop something and there's going to be a tirade of a bunch of shit he puts out with his brand. So. All right, so I think we have time for one fan question, so let's pull it up. Let's see what we got. This one is from Shane Universe. What do you guys think is the best way for hip-hop legends to keep elevating with the constant pressure they're under to present more mature con content and be more like their old selves all at the same time? Hmm. Mm, I'll go with, and honestly, I take it back to the Drake conversation where he had with LeBron about knowing, you know, not being Went a to guy gracefully that, yeah, exit. Well, not just, I, I don't think just exiting because we know rappers and artists, they're always going to create, they're always going to make music. Mm -hmm. But I think knowing when to transition and, um, Knowing that, I mean, I'm not even the same person I was last week. <laughs> Knowing that every year that you grow, you have to grow to a new plateau. Act, you always speak about, you know, wanting to hear a guy kind of elevate and you want to hear growth in their music. Like when we talk about Meek, you're like, yo, we know all the shit you could do, but can you make those next records that can make us appreciate you for more years to come? Mm -hmm. So I think um, it's just understanding where you are. Looking at all the young guys that's coming up and seeing who's going to be the ones because you have to acknowledge them and say, all right. I know I like him and I like his shit, but I could never like jump on that type of wave yeah. in order to be me. But you got to show them a little bit of love and know where you're going in your career. Yeah, it's uncharted territory now. Well, well people are clearly making ground though, but <clears throat> the, the older artists, like there's a lane for mature content in hip hop. And there, and if you look, people are consuming it. So, you, you have to know your, your audience and you have to grow with your audience. A lot of times there's this imbalance where the artist outgrows the audience and then we'll say they fell off because the audience wants the ignorant shit and maybe they've grown past Are it. you counting yourself right? as part of this audience and does that to artists? <laughs> Negative. Huh. No. I grow with my artists. You feel me? Now, I'm not going to lie. Some, I like you to give us a mix. <laughs> I'm but, not going to no, lie. No, for real, but... for real, for real. But like, like, but like this, like T.I., my favorite album, his is Paper Trail. That was the mature T.I., just got out of jail, ain't trying to go back. Man, let me show y'all what I've learned. Mm. I like that. I like that. You get me? So I don't only like the ignorant shit, but sometimes a artist become trapped in the same shit. Like, yo, they, they just love me uh, just talking about shooting niggas and selling drugs. Mm. Now, and, and I'm not saying you have to stop talking about that. But sometimes you got to show the other side of the game. That's why Jay has always been great. This right. nigga give you the full threes. This nigga well, Jay I, gives you a wire, a wire <laughs> season in the album. That's right. good. Well, I think um, the biggest thing is that artists like mentally stay uh, in the year they was the most successful. A lot of them. That's why we don't we don't see a lot of them make it over. Yeah. You know, every year it is, I mean. Every era there's only like four or five guys that are at the forefront, and you could go on a slew of how many didn't make it on the boat over. Um, because they don't understand transition and they don't understand that I need to grow from here. And without talking about outgrowing, I think sometimes like artists, when fans are used to you talking about your come up, mm -hmm. they want to hear what that's like as opposed to, well, I just bought a Bentley. Right. I just bought a watch because that's not relatable to the average person. So you got to tell them how you bought the Bentley, right. what it took for you to do it, what, where you was at from A to B to C. Mm -hmm. So. Transition, like you said, Jay has been good at that, and he's given people, uh, uh, pun intended, the blueprint on how to do it. I think that's where Drake takes a lot of you know pages out of his book because if if you look at Drake's career, he always is talking about the next thing he has going on, right? And that's why I respected him saying, "Yo, I don't want to be the guy that just I'm sitting here looking around and I'm out of place." You yeah. feel me? Let's see what happens when the time comes. Right. <laughs> All right, guys, that's our show for today, Thursday, Friday. Um, final plug, I'm going to be at Envision Festival in Brooklyn on Saturday. It's E-N-V-S-N -S if you want to look it up. Girls, if you're watching, guys, if you're watching, you have a little sister or your girl, tell them to come out. It's going to be a nice event for ladies. You're not invited. Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> Shout out to Laura Stylus from Hot 97 about, about for organizing this. Watching, maybe. Oh, come pull up. This is your chance to shoot your shot with Tanache. No, no, I'm saying, what about the males are watching? Mm. It's only for girls? What's it's, up? it's a woman thing. I mean, I guess you guys could come be allies. That's cool. They could come respect women? 
Come respect women. Here he goes. Come respect. Women. <laughs> I, I thought you should have rocked the shirt today. I miss your respect women shirt. Right. And we're going to be at Complex Con. Complex Coming Con. Up. Yeah, I no. still don't know how we're going to do the debate thing. But people already started hitting me. So look, if you really think, uh, I know, how about this? If you're going to be at Complex Con, you're really a fan of Everyday Struggle, we'll definitely love to meet you. Maybe you can send us a little video. Should we give them like a test to see if they can actually debate so we pick the person who debates with us? Yeah, a little pitch, man. Listen, Wayne on, on the topic for, that we had this week. <clears throat> Pick a topic right now and, for and, them to debate. Maybe they can send us videos over the weekend. Yeah, and, and listen, you, debating with one you of your watch, boys or yeah. something. Well, you don't have to even do that. Like, you watch the show, you see Wayne will lay out points. I lay out points, and you guys can just <laughs> give your counter. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. But, but yeah, yeah, just give us your your counterpoints or like your point of view. Like, we're trying to just get a different opinion Absolutely. and also showcase the fans who do love the. Do love the genre. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I just want to say before we go, shout out to the... I, I ran into some Everyday Struggle fans yesterday. I was in Soho. I thought you were going to say shout out to the Tims, man. Oh, here you go. <laughs> no, man, no. But shout out to these young men. They they uh, went up, came up to me and we spoke briefly about how they liked the show and they just wanted to say, tell academics I said what's up. So shout out to those young men. All right, What's up, young man? <laughs> up, I don't know any man. of the names, but... Um, yeah. All right, yeah, send us your videos. Pick any topic that you like that you disagree with, either one of them. Hit mm. us in the DMs. Follow my instructions, please. DMs on Twitter. It's Everyday Shrug with two Gs. Who's going to be the fan that gets a debate with these two lovely gentlemen? We'll see you at ComplexCon and on Monday. Bye, you guys. That's good. even trying to wrap the show this time. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you get a package to wear all black like Ash.